What's going on guys? So today's video, man it seems like everybody's dropping their top 10 summer fragrance videos right now. So that's what this video is going to be, but this is going to be the designer edition. There will be a niche one in a few weeks, but this is going to be my top 10 summer designer fragrances for 2018. And just like a lot of my top 10 videos, these will not be in any particular order. However, I will be labeling them as 1, 2, 3, and so on. And there's a few fragrances in here that I will be reaching for a little bit more because I actually prefer those ones. So there's certainly going to be a few new fragrances to make this list. The first fragrance is from the house of Cartier or Cartier, and this is Eau de Cartier Vetiver Bleu. So what you get is Vever, Mint, and Licorice. The first time that I smelled this fragrance was not for me, but I ended up getting a couple samples, and when I started wearing them, I actually started appreciating, and to the point where, got me a bottle. Now, this fragrance here does have a playful side with the licorice, and it also has a classy side with the vetiver. This is marketed towards the unisex, but I think it leans more so for the masculinity. And with that mint, the mint is not very prominent to my nose. It's more so in the background. But with this one, I find it's more of a dressier type of fragrance. Now, even though that this is a fun type of scent, it's more so for a fun, classy event, if that makes any sense. It has like someone with more of a fun, playful disposition, but also classy at the same time. This is definitely a fragrance that I think is for that type of person. Scent number two is going to be from the house of Vince Camuto, and that is Eterno. Now, with this, you get saffron, mint, citruses, patchouli, pepper, and more. This is one of the freshest fragrances that I have ever smelled when it comes to designers. I love the opening and I love the mid. I'm just not big on the dry down. The dry down is pretty much just patchouli and I think it's woods. The opening and the mid are stellar just to the point where that screw the base. I'm just going to be carrying a decant and reapplying it as the day progresses because this is certainly a fresh clean type of fragrance. The mint in this is really well done. Vince Camuto definitely has some hidden gems out there. And this fragrance is certainly fresh to death. So scent number three is going to be Perry Ellis 2018. So this was a blind buy and I generally try not to blind buy. A few of these have been blind buys in this video. But this one I knew going in was actually going to be a safe blind buy just because it is Perry Ellis. Perry Ellis really doesn't have anything daring, but it really doesn't have anything extravagant, if you will. They do have very clean, fresh, safe designers. So last week when I was in Chicago for my honeymoon, I ended up buying this one at Macy's. They did not have a sample, so I ended up blind buying this one. But the notes to this one, juniper, bergamot, lavender, oak moss, rosemary, with more. This was actually my scent of the day yesterday, and I do get a really nice oak moss, lavender, and juniper with this one. It is fresh, it is clean, again, it's not offensive, it's definitely not groundbreaking whatsoever. For an average Joe who just wants a few summer clones, this is definitely going to be something that I think that he will enjoy. Scent number four is going to be from the House of Prada. Man, I don't have a lot of Prada fragrances, but this one really did catch my surprise, and this is Prada's Lum. Iris, Neroli, Violet, Woods, and more. I don't like a lot of fragrances that have a very heavy iris, which this does, but this is more so on the clean, fresh, soapy version, if you will. Uh, it's not like a Dior Ohm type of iris. That, that fragrance really is not for me. But this does have quality, just like how Dior Homme does. I know how a lot of people love that fragrance. But this definitely has quality to it. It's like a luxurious, soapy type of feel. Clean, fresh, very versatile. This was actually my wedding scent or for day number two. My wedding was actually three days, and I ended up wearing this to the dinner and reception. I did end up getting a compliment from the wife, but also from the in-laws. This doesn't really, on my skin, project very heavily. It's more so of a close skin scent where people have to get into my, my space in order to smell this one. But when they do, they do like it and Prada Lum is definitely a hitter. Scent number five is from a house that unfortunately has discontinued all of their fragrances. I wish they did not because some of the fragrances are really, like, they're hidden gems. But they're actually really expensive nowadays because they are discontinued and they are becoming hard to find. And I used to push this house hard when I first started my, uh, my YouTube journey. And this is Canali Summer Night. So with this fragrance, you get pineapple, leather, different spices and citruses, fruits, violet, and a lot more. A lot of Canali fragrances, and this is no different with this one, you get an overabundance of notes. Jesus, there's just, there's way too many notes in this scent. But what you do get is you get like a very masculine leather. So you get your citruses and your spices. This is classy. 
but it's also very versatile. You, you can wear this dress down to dressing up and just because it says night does not mean you can just wear it at night. This is like an all day scent. If you want a signature scent that's different, that unfortunately is a little bit harder to find, look into Canelli Summer Night. This here unfortunately ranges anywhere. The prices on these can be a little too high. I've seen it for as high as $225, but I ended up buying mine for about $130 Canadian, so about $100 to $110 USD. If you could find it for that price, and if you don't mind blind buying, if you're one of those guys, I think that Canali Summer Night may be a fragrance for you. Scent number six came out in 2004, and this is definitely a timeless classic. Man, this will always be relevant. Chanel Allure on Sport. Aldehydes, citruses, tonka bean, pepper, cedar, more. It does say sport, but you can wear this for any event. Casual to black tie formal. This is a very classy yet fun type of fragrance. Lasts a long time. Projection is amazing. Compliment getter. People love this one. And with this one, out of all the fragrances that I've had throughout my entire life, the only one I have ever finished was this one here. This is my second bottle. Scent number seven is going to be from a house that I really, man, this is the only fragrance that I have from this house except for L'Homme Ideal from the house of Guerlain. This is so with this one you get mojito, you get lime, mint, rum, vetiver. This is definitely a tropical type of scent. You need a tropical fragrance, hence the hat, when it comes to summertime. This is definitely a playful type of scent, casual as can be, but it smells of quality. I ended up getting this one for $30 Canadian at Marshalls and what a blind buy. Just amazing. This is definitely going to be another fragrance that's heavy in my rotation. So some of the fragrances that I covered, good citrus scent fragrance, fresh fragrance, a tropical fragrance, but I think you need a solid green scent. Zegna Z Milan. Fig, sandalwood, and clary sage. Those are the only notes. You get a very prominent clary sage and fig note that's a very, that makes it a very green scent. There is definitely some sandalwood in this one. But this scent here would be a safe office fragrance. I wouldn't really say it's more a very semi-formal type of scent because really it doesn't, to my nose, it really doesn't lean that way. But I think that this would be a good everyday type of scent, but also an office fragrance if you just want a few scents. This did cost me about $30, $35 Canadian, so no more than $25 USD. Scent number nine is going to be from the house of Robert Graham, and this is... Courage. Bergamot, Gaiac Wood, and Vodka are the only notes to this fragrance. Now I do get a boozy accord. I do not know what vodka smells like just because I don't drink so it's a little bit hard for me to distinguish what some of these different alcoholic beverages smell like. But I do get a really nice boozy accord with a really clean crisp bergamot and a masculine woody base. This fragrance is classy but it's very casual. I think that you can wear it to the office because it is a safe type of fragrance. It will not put anybody off. But it is somewhat generic to someone who is very far into the journey. But for me, I really do like this one. I just can't wear it when I'm at work because some people might think that I've been uh, drinking while I've been driving. So I definitely can't wear this one. But for me, this is a great weekend scent when I'm like just feeling kind of chilled. And if I just want to wear a fragrance, that just makes me feel good. This is definitely one of those fragrances that make me feel good, but also kind of classy, a little bit grown if you will, because it really does have a nice boozy accord. So scent number one is actually going to be a tie. So uh, a lot of you guys were saying scent number one is guaranteed going to be a Ferrari Bright and Early. Well, you're correct. But the other one is actually going to be Radiant Bergamot. Yup, I ended up getting it. Boy, these fragrances here are fantastic. So with bright neroli, clearly a lot of neroli, citruses, vetiver, rosemary, amber, a little bit more. This does get comparisons and I do think, now I'm the one who said it first, that I do think that this is really close to Tom Ford's neroli portofino, just a fraction of the price, absolutely. This is a clean, fresh, invigorating, zesty type of fragrance, but so is this one. With radiant bergamot, citruses, ginger, nutmeg, moss, rosemary and more. These both together just they smell very natural. They're very clean, crisp. They do smell different but at the same time they smell a little bit of the same. I said on camera when I did this video that if you have this you really don't need this. But for what I paid for this was definitely worth it and I really wanted this in my collection. And at the time of this recording, I got two more bottles on the way from Europe that have not yet arrived, but jeez, this is definitely a fantastic fragrance. 
along with this. And I'm going to state this right now. A lot of people have been asking me as to where you can find this one. Right now, at this very moment, you can get it on fragrancebuy.ca for $45, including this one. $45 each. Thanks to my friend Alex for, for letting me know because, you know, a lot of guys have been asking me, if you want both of these fragrances, check them out. They're both very safe. $45 each Canadian, $35 to $40 American. You can't go wrong. Man, this was a really long video. So that is it. That is my top 10 designer fragrances for the summer of 2018. There will be a niche edition, but from this list, which ones are your favorites? Have you smelt any? Are there any fragrances here that really do interest you? I have done reviews on some of these, so if you wish to check out the links, they will be down below in the description box. So guys, that is it for this long video. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Share the video, subscribe to it if you haven't. If you have subscribed, make sure to hit that notification bell because sometimes YouTube just does not send them out. I thank you for your time. Take care and we'll see you later.